Hi, good morning. So today we are we're going to elaborate more about Tefl polarization analysis. First, how can we get this graph? So the procedure is very simple. You are uh, you if you uh, study about Dyson Tesla cell DSSC, you might come up with this analysis, and you also might not come up with this analysis. If you study about photo and not, this analysis is useless you can't use this analysis because photo and not it doesn't support anything but you can also put if you want to discuss if you are good in discussing and comparing the result why not you can put but normally people when they are study about counter electrode they put this result because it's very important if you are studying counter electrode you want to know the what we call that the relation between the J naught and also the J naught exchange current density and J limb limiting diffusion current density with the charge transfer resistance. We want to know the resistance between J limb and J naught with RCT. So it's important to put if you are studying counter electrode. So first, when you want to measure using a dummy cell of counter electrode put sandwich together and what you can do is you can using potential stat if you have Versat software or Nova software you can open it and you can choose the procedure which is linear polarization linear polarization you just set the voltage the range from negative 0.6 of 0.6 you can refer to the channel normally people use negative 0.6 to 0.6 and it will generate this graph it will generate itself so it's very easy so from the graph actually what's so important about this Tefl polarization analysis so when you are study you are googling about the relationship when you go to a google you are saying that they give you a formula they give you a formula like this okay this formula indicate that j node or exchange current density is directly proportional to the charge transfer resistance meaning that if your rct your resistance is smaller your j naught will be higher so it's very important that so what happened if we got uh let's say if your eis electrochemical analysis your nyquist plot give a very low semicircle and then if you want to corroborate the data or you want to compare the data between or you what we call that if you want to confirm or support the data is it the data correct or not because the data is, itself cannot stand alone you must give uh, one or two supporting data because then when we compare it we are saying that if we get a smaller rct the value of j node must be higher if you are compare different material for example this material if you are saying that you got p dot ncc the j node is higher compared to the others then what happened if if you compare with the eis electrochemical analysis the resistance of the eis should be smaller compared to the others because the value is correlated to each other okay then you might wondering what is the benefit of j node and j lim in the dssc so a higher j node reveals high electrocatalytic activity towards the reduction of triiodide to iodide whereas the higher j lim indicate good contact between electrolyte and counter electrode j lim for a good contact j node for high electrocatalytic activity so So people might want to have both high because it is important in the solar cell. But you can also support your data with uh, what we call that contact analysis. You can use um, water droplet. I, I didn't remember but if I remember I will discuss later. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is the correlation between the Tefl polarization with EIS. Okay, I remember now. So, in order to support your good contact, you can go, you can done the contact angle analysis. It will prove whether your material have a good contact or not. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for watching.